Good afternoon and welcome back to my channel. I have taken a month hiatus away from YouTube just to relax a little bit. Things at work got really busy uh, and the weather has been atrocious, uh, very hot. We are here today in Deland, Florida at the Reptile Discovery Center um, where Carl and Mara who own this uh, Venom Lab have uh, graciously allowed us to come and see a behind the scenes milking of venomous snakes. I did announce this in a video a couple weeks ago so we're actually here to do it now and see some other different snake species that they have. They also have a nature trail that you can walk with several different other reptiles. So I will put a link to their website in the description down below. But for right now, let's go walk the trail and see what we can find. So here at the uh, Reptile Discovery Center, uh, Carl and Mar have a discovery trail that has different reptiles that you can see. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here on the sign so you can see what their hours look like. And you guys are welcome to pause and read that if you'd like. But we're going to go see the trail for ourselves. So we've got a list of some of the things that we can expect to see. Ugh, iguanas. I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. Everything else, not terrible. I'll take on an alligator any day. Throw an iguana my way, I'm gone. Look at this guy. we got a little radiated tortoise making his way around. That, you know, I, I kind of wish I could just live my life like this. Instead, i got to work, pay bills. Ugh. Who's got time for that? There's a little information about the radiated tortoise if you guys want to take a look. Of course, we're in Florida, so you can't uh, go wrong finding a good old American alligator just hanging out. And again, there's a sign for anybody else who may want to take a little read. So a grand total cost to come here, I think we ended up paying $13 and change after taxes and everything, and then you get to watch the, uh, they have two sessions, usually that they uh, milk the snakes for venom, and that venom goes off to research uh, at pharmaceutical companies for anti-venom, and you know, just to general research and information on them. So yeah, today I would like to say um, that we do have a special permission from Carl and Mara who own the facility to get behind the scenes and get some video footage of them uh, collecting venom for their next session. So it's not a normal thing, uh, but they do usually have this where you can watch behind a glass. Uh, so yeah, just definitely want to throw a special thanks out to Carl and Mara for allowing us to be here today. Yeah, here we got a pair of cute little Florida box turtles. They were just chasing after a little bug here. I don't know where it went. But they were actually running pretty fast, so whoever told you that uh, turtles are slow lied to you. <laughs> There's a little more information on them if you want to know. Next on our list is the African spur thigh tortoise. A big one you see a lot at zoos actually. There's an airplane flying over us right now, that's fantastic. Here's a little bit of information about this guy. You can pause that to take a look if you want to know more info. Hello there. How are you? I'm sorry, I don't have any food. Are you? I, I'm, I feel like a jerk now because I think he thinks that we're here to feed him. I'm gonna back away now. It was nice to see you. Bye. You're actually really cute. Very cute. If you ever wondered why he has a bumpy shell, you're welcome to pause and read about it as well. I should also note that they only do the venom collecting twice a day on certain days of the week. So like it's a Saturday right now, as of the recording of this, it's Saturday, uh, July 9th. Um, and I believe they do venom collections on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, but check their website just to be sure. Um, we're supposed to have a Do not make that here. A large pharmaceutical or medical company makes the drug but their project does begin here with us and three other laboratories in the collection of whole snake venom. So they're going to take the venoms that you guys will see collected here this afternoon and they use them in a process called immunization. Meaning, they take a little bit of venom, dilute it way down, and then they'll inject it into a large host animal. In this country, that animal is a horse for the coral snake project and a sheep for the pit fiber project. It does not hurt them. They just create what is called an antibody response in their bloodstream. Throughout the coastal plain to extreme southeastern Louisiana, throughout all of peninsula of Florida and many of its barrier islands. Unfortunately, the eastern diamondback has been extirpated in parts of its former range. 
and is in decline in many areas where it was once common. This magnificent reptile is found in a variety of habitats and often coexists with a large number of other species in gopher tortoise burrows. Pine flatwoods and the border areas between upland habitats and low-lying swamp are some of the eastern diamondbacks' favorite. Diamondbacks feed exclusively on warm-blooded prey with rabbits, rats, and squirrels all being normal parts of an adult's diet. Because of their large size, copious amounts of venom, and disagreeable nature, cottonmouths can in fact be very dangerous. Although the snake is almost never fatal, a bite can and does require antivenom and can result in significant tissue destruction and other complications if not treated properly. Cottonmouths can grow up to six feet in length, although three and a half feet is about average for an adult. They make excellent captives, and many of the hundred or so housed at Medtoxin. This guy's really active. Eastern Chain King Snake. Yeah. Gonna be upside down. Like hanging out upside down. Oh, yeah. Europe yeah. apparently has incredible news. Yeah, yeah, they so do. Definitely we think it's kind of cold there, but. Yeah. From Lynn, they have like different stories, like four ones and fifties, four two snakes. Oh, yeah. 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 Beautiful, look at that. Look at the horns. is a brilliantly patterned pit pipe of the southeastern United States. Paul, are there some copperheads up around where you are? Maryland, I think, is pretty good. The southeastern North Carolina. It is still common in many of these areas. Paul, do you see many copperheads in Maryland? Um, I don't get out in the field much uh, if it's a bit of fossil hunting. <laughs> I've only seen green snakes. Yeah. But I know they're out there. Yeah, Maryland's good. Up the Mississippi River Valley and over a large part of the Appalachian Mountain chain. This snake and his close relatives range over the coastal plain and up the Mississippi River Valley of the southeastern United States, oh, eastern Texas, the very southeastern corner of Virginia. Mm -hmm. well, the, the copious amounts of venom and disagreeable nature. Cottonmouths can, in fact, be very dangerous. Although this snake is almost never fatal, a bite can and does require any venom. We sometimes move his head past the glass rapidly in an effort to give the snake some visual stimulus and induce a bite. Sometimes, as the snake bites, you can see the venom gland just behind the eye contract. This venom is used in the preparation of profab antivenom. This snake, one of our favorite foreign natives, is actually found I'm going to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. for North Carolina. Okay. Throughout the coastal plain to extreme southwest of the end. Throughout all of the peninsula of Florida and many of the barrier islands. Unfortunately, the eastern out of has been extirpated in parts of its former range. And it did decline in many areas where it was once common. This magnificent reptile is found in a variety of habitats 
can often coexist with a large number of others. You got about 20 seconds. Okay, all right, you're good. Good? Yep. Yeah. An adult, or even worse, a child, can rapidly be fatal if not treated promptly and properly with antivenom. The reptile discovery. Cobras possess a small fixed front fang. And as the snakes are in a fight, you can often see these fangs. Cover venoms also contain powerful postsynaptic neurotoxins capable of disrupting neurotransmission and resulting in paralysis and respiratory arrest. <laughs> Sometimes, as little as 10 to 20 milligrams of cobra venom is a lethal dose. So you know, once he bites, babe, then you'll get the bad. As you watch the monocle cobra bite, they are routinely producing over 100 milligrams of venom. Is this the same species? Same species, you get yeah. Wow. That's what was, that was my question. And that's going to do it for us here today, guys, at the Reptile Discovery Center in Deland, Florida. Thank you so much, Carl, for having us. Thank it's you. Been a pleasure. Coming, this was amazing. We'll definitely be back. I will put a link to their website in the description down below so you guys can check them out. Uh, I think ended, we ended up paying like $13 to get in, so definitely come check out their Discovery uh, Trail. See Carl milk some amazing snakes. I still don't understand how you stay so calm doing that, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Alrighty, y'all. We are in the car. We uh, left uh, the Reptile Discovery Center, came straight to Disney Springs so that we could pick up our annual pass holder magnets, got rained on, and now we're going to head to Hollywood Studios. So the next video you see will be from Hollywood Studios. I do appreciate you guys taking the time to check out this video from the Reptile Discovery Center. Again, thank you to Carl and Mara. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends and hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever I do post. Thank you guys and we'll see you in the next video.